All right, guys, thanks for having, thanks for coming and talking with me. Um, my name is Omari Deal. I'm an agronomist, graduated from Earth University in Costa Rica, which teaches agronomy, agricultural engineering, and I run a business called Utopia, Edible Landscapes and Sustainable Agriculture Consultancy. I work very closely with a lot of schools, um, pretty much all of them, you know, whoever's interested in outside, and more closely, even more so now with Green Rock as I assist them in developing the outdoor components of the Eco Schools program. So um, there are a few, there are different pathways to this Eco School program and the management of Green Rock can surely inform you more on it, but the pathways that I'm dedicated to um, are biodiversity, community gardens or school gardens, healthy lifestyles, and school grounds. And so if any school picks up on any of those four pathways, then I'm called in to come and help and assist with the programs and assisting them reaching the goals that they want involving the environment, their external environment. Well, what, what we're doing through this program is pretty much connecting people, our culture, back to the environment. It, it's funny how we, we, we manage to just take it away of every aspect of our lives and we call it sanitizing or protection or whatnot. But if you go back into the literature, we as human beings, we've been apart and living intimately with the environment for 99% of our human existence. It isn't because of the last 200 years that we've decided to push it away from us. And I feel like a lot of the problems that we're facing today, a lot of it has to do with that small little disconnect that we have with our environment. So EcoSchools is wonderful for humanity and even more intimately for Bermuda who really needs it in getting our culture back in connection with the environment. You know, it's, it's showing things I mean, we're starting pretty much from basis because we're two to three generations disconnected in Bermuda alone. So we're teaching children essentially how to, what is the environment? What's it for? Why, do, why should we care it? How does it care us? How do we interact with the environment? What experiences are we trying to get from the environment? What can we learn from it as well? And so it's, it's pretty much baby steps to get us to back to where, 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 where we belong, you know? Um, science has also come on board and because I have a huge, I'm very spiritual but I have a huge scientific background and science and spirituality is now meeting there in the center and it's really exciting, you know, they're coming up with new studies showing that just there are fungi and bacteria within the soil that in, in, induce the secretion of serotonin in your brain, which is the feel good hormone essentially. So just having your bare skin in contact with the bare ground you're lowering blood pressure, you're reducing stress levels, you're essentially helping improve your life, you know? So it's not just a hippie being, let's dance around in the jungle naked, you know, to feel good. Yeah, they had it right, but now scientists is telling us that, hey, they really did have it right, you know? Eco Schools is now coming in to, to introduce Bermuda back into that way of life, you know? We're very blessed in Bermuda that in spite of our population and land mass, there's so much natural spaces here, you know, it's just us getting back in touch with those spaces. And then us making our artificial or our workspaces or our concrete spaces related back to nature. And we can take on examples from all around the world. I know in Singapore right now, I believe that if they decide that they want to build a piece of land, or they want to build a building on this piece of land, which was green space, the square footage of green space that they took off to build that land, to build that building, they have to incorporate that same square footage back in the area, any way you want. So you find them slapping it on walls, putting it on the ceiling, put it on roofs, all over, you know? Which is a beautiful concept in which we can slowly start to inch toward in Bermuda. You know, everything comes from nature. We get sun, rain, wind, all the elements that we need to survive, period. There's also food, and if you know how to manipulate and work properly with nature, you can step into the economy you got healthy well-being you got your lifestyle you got just nutrition you know I can go on forever with everything you know <laughs> so in the Zico schools program there's four schools basically that's chosen outdoor pathways and they are Elliott primary school Victor Scott Crossback, and more recently opportunity workshop um, that's gonna be a fun one opportunity workshop because we're working with people with diverse abilities and we never really know how it's going to happen, but it brings in the whole therapeutic horticulture aspect around the environment and relating everyone into the environment, regardless of their ability. To find out the, the, 
the feedback or what sort of a difference that this program and the individuals running the program are having or making the impact in the school. Um, I can't say that I have any data on paper that's going to show me, but I can talk directly from my experience interacting with these schools. Now we've seen the children when they've come in in day one and they come and they're ripping banana leaves and they're chasing chickens and they're throwing rocks. They don't understand what the environment is and the importance of it. After working through this program, they become so sensitive to the environment. I mean, for example, we've taken these same students who are learning at Prospect and at Victor Scott, and we see them, we see them in different spaces now. So I also work at Kaleidoscope Arts Foundation. So we deal with them up there as well. And they're actually holding hands around the plants, singing nursery rhymes to the plants, you know? And it's amazing that connection, we're teaching this connection to five to seven year olds primarily. And they're coming in and, and it's pretty much relating on terms that they can understand. So it's, what happens if you're rude to a person? Oh, that person's rude back to you. Okay, and what if you're nice to them? They'd be nice, my mama gave me a gas candy, you know? Cool. And what about a dog? What if you're teasing a dog and being little? It would get saucy. My dog chased me the other day because I was rude to it. And what if you're nice? Oh, he's nice. He let me pet. I rubbed his belly and everything. Okay. What do you think happens to a plant when you act like that to him? I, I don't know. They act too? I said, yes. They just act a whole lot slower. So, let's be nice to the plants and they'll be nice back to us. Yeah, this tree is giving us shade. This banana tree is giving us bananas. I said, perfect. Now this is the plant nursery. What are you in the baby nursery? You sing nursery rhymes. Can we sing nursery rhymes to the plant? Let it go, mate. So the holding hands every day, they're coming to class and they're singing to these plants, they're talking to these plants. They're taking them from nursery to preschool, to big school, to graduation. Graduation, of course, is our plate where we're sitting down and eating it and it brings it all back full circle. For the first time in this program, I mean, I've seen seven-year-olds eat raw radishes. Who does that? I don't even like radishes necessarily, the top's okay. But because they were able to grow it from seed, harvest it, clean it, prepare a salad with radishes, cherry tomatoes, a vinaigrette that we made also from herbs and seedlings in the garden. They took the radish leaf tops, made a pesto with sheet cheese, all pasture-raised, and devoured it. You know, the children are coming in class and they're pulling carrots directly from the ground wiping it on their pants and eating it, going home with mud smeared all across their face. And the parents are saying, I don't know how you do this. I can't even get this child to eat a strawberry, the best fruit in the world. He's coming and eating carrots with dirt on it, you know? It's amazing. And it's really not amazing. It's just that connection. It's just being a bridge. I don't think any of us are reinventing the wheel or showing up or superheroes or anything. We're following our vocation. Our vocation happens to be connecting humanity back to nature, or at least being a guide or a bridge to this space that we're always in so that we can remember where we came from and hopefully get us out of this hole that we've dug for ourselves going forward. So in terms of how is the program working, for me it's absolutely wonderful. And every day I come across these children and I see the improvements that they're making day by day, it makes me know that I'm in the right space doing the right thing with the right people.